Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here. And today, since everyone seemed to really love my Snowflake data quality checks implementation video, I thought, why not make one on Redshift, right? Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly what you need to do to implement SQL check operators to perform data quality checks in your Redshift database for any kind of ETL use cases to make sure you can audit data as it comes into your database um, and in an ongoing manner. Um, so without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into the action. Um, so first, what you're gonna wanna do is go through the classic long list of operators. Um, so here it is actually kind of a long list. And so it's important to have all these in place before we actually get started. Um, so pandas, pandas data frame, allow us to manipulate uh, data using Python, importing the Airflow DAG tag, decorators for tasks. So we can just define tasks at, in the same way we would define Python tasks. Um, base operator chain, just allowing, giving us some additional uh, flexibility in how we're gonna do our bit mapping and scheduling our DAG. Um, dummy operator, everyone's favorite. Uh, and then Airflow operators for SQL, you're gonna need the SQL check operator, SQL interval check operator, SQL threshold check operator, and SQL value check operator. So we get all the checks that you can possibly do within SQL. Um, and then we're gonna use a good old local file system to S3 operator to transfer anything directly from a local file system into S3. Um, and then also a transfer operator from S3 to Redshift, just easing that process along as well. Um, and then we're also going to implement a Postgres operator um, so we can operate on a Postgres database. Um, and then finally, classic date, time, and task group, just so we have the ability to use the date time functions and also have the ability to do task grouping. And that's gonna be pretty crucial here. Um, so now that we've got all of our packages and requirements set up, we can get into actually writing the freaking DAG. So got all our packages in place now Let's start setting our DAG up. Um, so first we're gonna wanna do is just put some dates in here. These will change for yours. We're just gonna use them as example dates um, to set a date range. Task dictionary, um, just set this early on so we have a dictionary to organize our tasks by. Um, and then you'll understand what that means later. Then define our DAG, SQL data quality check in Redshift, call it whatever the heck you want, I don't care. Default arguments, um, pass this connection ID of the Redshift default. Um, so we don't have to bother including that Redshift connection in every DAG or every task, sorry. Um, and you'll just define that using the Airflow UI um, as well as a template search path. This is telling us where to pull the SQL from um, and also setting catch up to false. Um, and then after that, what we'll do is set some dummy operators. So these are just kind of setting the stage for how we're gonna use them later, but I always like to toss my dummies at the start of the DAG so they don't clutter up the rest. Um, so we have a beginning, ending, standard, and then we have some converged dummy operators for when we're converging data after a split. Um, so now that we've got this in place, let's get after our first actual task. So our first task here is going to be creating a Redshift table. Um, so all you're doing for this is using a Postgres operator, which is again, being passed that Redshift connection through that default argument, uh, creating a task ID of create table, self-explanatory there, and defining what SQL statement we're gonna use. So this is just a SQL statement that's creating a generic trip data table, um, as well as you can see here, Postgres connection ID. Um, so we've got a table to get going and working with. Um, so let's move on to the next one. So we've got our table created. Now let's create our first task group. Um, and this is going to be our row quality checks um, as a quality check group. So what we're doing here is creating 10 tasks that are gonna spot check 10 random rows um, within that table we created. So for I and range zero to 10, run some low level data quality checks using our SQL check operator. Um, so this is again, using the SQL statement to actually conduct the che checks. Um, and then we're using a task ID that's generated dynamically using a Jinja template. So it can just pass in that I. So each task will be created dynamically um, with that, you know, the delineation being that I um, iterating variable. Um, so we've got our first SQL check operator in now, and let's move on to the next one. So now that we've gotten our row values checked, let's go into our table level quality check. See how many rows are in the table and make sure that matches up to what we're expecting. Um, so here we're going to use the SQL value check operator. Um, and this is in not within that previous task group. And so what this is going to do is basically pass a SQL statement. And you can see here, instead of a file, we're just directly using SQL, um, selecting account from 
that redshift table we just created um, and checking that it is equal to our pass value of 20,000. Um, so you would change this pass value to whatever number of rows that you actually expect to be within this table. So got our table level quality checks. Now we're going to run an interval check. So in this instance, what we're doing, since this is trip data, we're just checking that an average trip distance today is within a threshold uh, that we expect given the trip distance yesterday. Um, so you can kind of take this and apply it to whatever you're trying to do um, and, and apply those rules to the threshold you're setting. You know, you just want to make sure it's within historical limits. Um, so interval check here using the SQL interval check operator. Um, we are, again, just pulling up that redshift table we created um, saying days back, go one day back in the table, um, check that filter column for upload date. Um, and then the metrics threshold we're gonna set here is AVG trip distance, and that's the column um, within this table for trip distance is 1.5. So we wanna make sure that that trip was around the threshold of 1.5 and didn't actually exceed. Um, so really easy way just to make sure that everything's staying within your historical averages and avoiding you know any big spikes in data if you don't expect that to happen under normal conditions. Next, we're gonna have our threshold operator. So with this, this is going to be similar to our row level check that we're going to make sure that certain row values make and or meet our desired thresholds. Um, so threshold check, using again the threshold check operator where we are selecting the maximum passenger counts. Um, so all of your passenger count from your that redshift table we created and then making sure that they're within the threshold uh, between one and eight of a passenger count. Um, so in this, you know, we're looking at cars. So if there's more than eight passengers in a car, either someone's breaking the law or you got some bad data. I wonder which one it is. So our next step here is a little bit of housekeeping and avoiding um, a double uh, comparison with, you know, you have your success and failure cases interfering with each other. Um, so it's gonna drop a redshift table if there already is an existing trip data table um, within that database. So you can see we just have a drop table statement, uh, Postgres section for that redshift ID again. Um, and this is just exactly like it sounds like, super simple, dropping a table to make sure that there are no duplicates within our redshift database. Um, so things don't get run on the wrong table. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break a little bit of airflow best practices here. Um, and this is only because this is just kind of an example. We wouldn't expect you to do this in actual, uh, you know, data pipeline because you don't wanna load a bunch of data onto your airflow worker nodes. Uh, but this is a really small operation um, and we're just adding an upload date data frame uh, column to our data frame for the SQL data quality checks because we're just populating a data set to be used within these data quality checks. Um, so just imagine this is just you editing a file through whatever way you would typically do, uh, but don't do, get too hung up on it. This just kind of makes this example more extensible to other backend data stores. So you know, hey, you know, if I need to make some transformations, um, I can do that within the context of this data pipeline. And again, another kind of unorthodox and nonsensical thing here, where we're deleting that upload date that we just created. Um, that's because we're creating that upload date just for the purposes of using it within this data quality check. Uh, and then we're just deleting, deleting it immediately after. Um, but within the repository that this is part of, um, that you can check the link for in the description. So if you want all the code, go to the description. Um, in, just making sure it doesn't interfere with those because those aren't expecting an upload data uh, date column. So this is the final step where everything's gonna come together um, in a for loop where we're gonna be actually setting up the data, creating a transfer to move it into S3 and then moving it into Redshift. So this is just a lot of clerical stuff that you will probably do in a different way, honestly, when you're doing it on your own. So the important things with the data quality checks we already went through. Um, but for the purposes of this example, what it's allowing you to do here is using that file path to collect that trip sample data, um, create a task dictionary, uh, using that file path to say, hey, add the upload dates um, to those, you know, to that prior column that we created earlier, um, and then upload that file that w with those updates, update dates added. So you can see we're using the add upload date um, in kind of that task definite or task API, task flow API way. So you can use it almost like a Python function. And then this task dictionary is then going to also include our local file system to S3 operator, which is going to take that data, <coughs> move it into an S3 uh, bucket. And so you can see the destination key, bucket, AWS connection ID. These will all be set through the Airflow UI. Uh, but again, probably gonna be doing this different way in production. And then your Redshift load task is taking the data from that Redshift 
or uh, from that S3 bucket and then loading it into a Redshift table. Um, so you're going to define, as you can see here, the connection to that Redshift table via the Airflow UI um, on that Airflow variables backend. You could also define it as an environment variable if you want to do it programmatically. Um, I personally like the UI, but you know, dealer's choice on that one. Um, and then finally here, we are going to delete the upload date for any file passed in there. So you can see, again, a Jinja template that is saying, hey, pass this file path, delete the upload date um, to clean that data for the future users. Um, and then finally down here, sorry, I didn't realize I you guys couldn't see that, but again, this is just a simple S3 to Redshift operator. Um, and then your task dictionary are going to be used to basically within this chain, say, hey, for all of those upload dates, add the, all those tables, add the upload date. That's why we're using a task dictionary. Converge, those empty operators coming back into play here. Um, and then again, task dictionary, uploading all those files to S3 with that date, uh, creating a Redshift table, and then uh, loading all that information from S3 to Redshift. Converging again, so we have a single point, so after all that, all those operations have happened, converges back, um, and then we're using that chain function, or using a task grouping here to say, hey, after you've converged, got all the data in Redshift, run all those data quality checks, and then drop that Redshift table after, um, after those data quality checks have been run. Um, so there's no duplicates and then delete that upload date from that database um, so again it doesn't interfere with any other data um, and then finally end that chain um, so now that you've seen the code let me show you the graph and then we'll wrap up so you've seen the code now let's look at it in a little more visual format so first you're going to see again uploading date adding upload date so this will be you know forever many data sets you're using this for converging um, those all those data sets just so we you know can kind of group every time um, uploading to s3 um, and you'll see again you have this identifier at the end because these are going to be dynamically created so you could have up to you know up to 09 or 99 um, different tasks depending on how many files you're uploading to s3 um, then we're going to be creating the table within uh, postgres then loading our data into that redshift database that we use use created uh, using the Postgres operator, and then going converging again before we implement all of our data quality checks on all those different tables. So you can see here, we're in, running those data quality checks in parallel because there's no reason not to. Why not make use of parallelism, a great feature of Airflow, um, and then dropping the table after we have done the data quality checks, and then doing some housekeeping so other people don't get mad at us um, for screwing up their data sets. Um, so, that's all I got for you today. I really hope you learned something and uh, have a good one. If you like this, subscribe and send me any kind of questions or comments, anything you want to see within one of these videos, I'd love to make it for you. So have a good one. Bye.